dang it. Oh my gosh. Dang it! What's up guys? This is a package I've been waiting on for a very long time. It had to ship all the way from China. So, let's take a look and see what this is. It's a QX90. You get a tough as nails carbon fiber frame that holds a F3 Evo brushed flight controller running clean flight. It also has an FR Sky 8 channel receiver with 8.5mm brushed motors. It also has a 520 TV line CMOS camera with a 25 milliwatt 32 channel video transmitter and a circular polarized antenna. You also get two single cell 600 milliamp hour LiPo batteries, an arguably useless balance charger, four extra props with a prop puller, double sided tape and a camera lens cover, and two extra motors. I was surprised how easy it was to set up the Trainus. I'm used to it being a pain in the tuchus to get things set up, but it's as easy as going in, selecting a new model, creating model, going over to the quadcopter, selecting, and channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four are all set up properly so you can just page through those. Yes, you wanna confirm. And we scroll down. To where we can modify the D16 to D8. Once that mode is set up, we can page over to get to the mixer. Once we're in the mixer, we want to add a fifth channel to be able to arm and disarm. So I'm going to go ahead and title this arm, and then I want my source switch to be SA. Once that's set, we can go ahead and exit out and bind the transmitter to the QX90. Going back to your model menu, press page and then scroll down where you can see the receiver bind selection. Go ahead and hit enter. And the transmitter should start making this weird beeping noise. If you look on the back side of the QX90, you'll see a very small momentary switch. You have to hold this down while plugging in the battery to put it into binding mode. Once it's in binding mode, the green LED in the back will turn on steady. Then select bind again on the Trainus. The green LED should turn off on the QX90 and you should be bound. Now all you have to do is turn off and on both the Trainus and the quadcopter and you should be good. I set channel five to the SA switch, so that's the one that we're gonna have to use to arm and disarm the quad. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> I'm acting like I've never flown a quadcopter before. Please, this is easy, right? <laughs> Not. Oh no, she took a spill. Still kicking. All right. Man, this thing needs to be trimmed out. That might be my problem. One more go, we're gonna come up, we're gonna go over there, we're gonna come back over here, we're gonna come back in the middle, and bam, let's see if I can do it. Living on the edge. There's one more thing the QX90 does that I'm very excited about. And you need a pair of these bad boys to be able to use it. So this little uh, cool haircut on top, that is a circular polarized antenna. And there's a camera on top as well. And it's transmitting video. On the back, there is a bunch of dip switches. Labeled one through six. One through five are actually the ones that change your channels. And on this, like I said, I usually throw away instructions, but this thing is pretty nice. You've got a very good um, diagram showing you how to get to each frequency and which uh, frequency group has each channel. So for me, on my goggles, I set up so that I have 
channel E. And every one is going to have a transmitter where you can select the band. So I select band E, so the first dip switch is down, second dip switch is up, and that's what I have here. First dip switch is down, second dip switch is up. So now that I have the band selected, I know which band to select on the QX90. The goggles are set up for band E right now. So if we take another look at this, the first channel in band E is the first dip switch down the rest of them up. I tried that and I, it was very staticky. Like it, you could kind of tell when the quad was moving, there was some type of signal going to the goggles, but it wasn't working the way it's supposed to. So I jumped to the next band, which you'll see is dip switch one down, two, three, and four up, and five down. So that's what I did here. I've got one down, two, three, four, up, five, down, and six, like I said, is up. I'm not doing anything with that. I think that's if you have the camera mounted upside down, it uh, switches orientation. I don't know. I didn't mess with that because it worked. So uh, if your camera is flopped or reversed or something, you can try switching that or whatever. But once I got the dip switches in here and the goggles all set up, We'll just go ahead and plug this in. So we get the red light on the transmitter showing that it is transmitting. And then I'll go ahead and plug these guys in. Move this off the side. Okay, so what I had to do, as you can see, uh, see my hand in there? But if you change the channel, it's all staticky. So there's so many channels in each band. So once you get to a band, you just kind of have to channel hop until you find the right one. And sometimes you can kind of see, like right there, you can kind of see what's going on. There's an image. It's not very good, but it's it's real staticky. We'll just keep going, and then you should you're you're close, and you'll either go a channel above or before or after that one, and that's when you get your everything working in. The latency, I gotta say, man, there is almost, I, I can't tell. Fly some FPV. Oh yeah. This is not gonna be good. I'm gonna like, this is the first time I've done this. This is, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna crash. So bad. Oh, there goes the cap. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try to go up over the GoPro. Let's do it. I feel like this is a bad idea. I'm gonna chop myself. Dang it. I rolled it over. I just gotta get the courage. Courage up to just roll with it and see where, where we can go. All right, did I record this? Okay, oh, we're recording, excellent. Man, this is a crazy experience. Guys, I'm doing it. daring but we made it through it so yeah QX90 tiny quadcopter FPV all amazingly put together and it works pretty good
Let's go. Someday, I'm gonna go to the back of that stinking chair. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. Someday. Woo! Oh! Oh my gosh! That's like, oh my gosh. That's the feeling right there. That's the magic! <laughs> Feel invincible? Man, I'm losing power. And props. Power and props. Those are both essential. Flying. Okay, so I found the prop, and I thought, hmm, what if it's like up on the shelf? Let me show you where I found this. Kitchen parkour. Looking. Look over there. The missing prop! I'm so excited. Oh, y'all want to check out that boom mount? I'm like almost full throttle. This is gonna fall. Sweet boom mount, yo! Check out my video. I'll show you how to make it. All right, so not everything is good about the QX90. I have found a lot of things that I really do like about it, but I do have a couple gripes, um, or at least suggestions to make it better. We'll go. We'll put that. Way. There are four standoffs, little leg things that help center the battery. Great, that's awesome. But they don't like hold on to the battery very good. It just kind of falls out. Kind of a bummer. So they do give you some of this sticky tape, but I mean that's not like a permanent solution. That's not a good solution because you don't want to leave the battery stuck to the quad. So if they could come up with a way to have it hold like slide in to like a little carriage or something that would be great also the power leads that's one of my frustrated things like I've got a pet peeve with quadcopters and the leads on the batteries and the leads off the flight controller and you plug them in there's always this like the nasty tail that sticks out that the props can chop in half or it's all it's never a clean interface I wish maybe a hard mount this on the frame like down there or something and then have the battery come in with a longer lead or have the battery with a really short lead and have the longer lead on the flight controller and reach around, plug into the battery and the battery is mounted every time. So, I don't know, there's just something there. I'd like to uh, see a better solution than that. Um, as far as everything else goes, the, the way it's constructed, the carbon fiber frame, I've crashed the bejiblets out of this thing and it's held up just fine. There's no even real splinters or scratches in the weave. It's holding together really well. Um, the antenna is kind of the, the fragile part of this entire deal. If you crash hard enough, you're gonna bend these little thin uh, clovers and you can go back with some needle nose pliers and kind of straighten things out. Um, but it's, it's definitely the most delicate part of the entire quad. And it's not that delicate. Like it, it can get beat around pretty good, but it's just something to kind of be mindful of if you're trying to figure out a way to, to protect and make this thing last longer. You might want to look into a way to, to protect this uh, antenna. Um, the charging cable. Oh my goodness, I spent so much time trying to make this work. So basically, the concept is you take battery A, battery B, you plug them in, now you have basically a two cell LiPo battery that you can charge through a balance plug. That's logical. On all of my LiPo chargers, I have some that are, I'm not, I don't have a great one, but it's a pretty decent quality LiPo charger, and I've got some crummy LiPo chargers. None of them could charge these batteries through a balance plug without actually having the power plug. Usually on the bigger LiPo batteries, you've got two, um, 
discharging cables coming out, your positive and negative, then you've got your charge balance plug that meters how much each cell actually has so it can figure out how to charge them. Um, and without the normal power plug coming out in addition to the balance charge, the chargers wouldn't charge it. So I had to basically make my own adapter. All right, so my solution for charging the battery was to not use the included cable adapter, which goes with the balance plug, but okay. use just the normal uh, banana plug connectors going to an adapter from Dean's to whatever that plug is that goes straight to the battery. Oh, perfect timing. So I charge a single cell A, single cell B separately, and then that works. This, I don't know if I'm just missing the point or I don't know how to do this, but that's kind of a, another thing they could do better is just include a, an adapter to charge those. Binding is not that hard, it's just not easy. That makes sense? <laughs> Maybe if the momentary switch was like a, a, a toggle switch and you could just toggle it on and then use both hands and plug in the battery and then turn the transmitter on and bind it and then come back and unplug it and toggle it off that would be a lot easier. Um, another gripe is the colored LEDs, the red and blue LEDs that tell you that the power's on or it's uh, armed or not armed in the front. This just might be um, something I'm dealing with, I don't know, but um, there is a pretty bad lens flare, like a glare, like uh, an FPV when I'm wearing goggles. I see a, a red and blue glare on the bottom side of the, the video feed, and that's because it's LEDs, so there could be, I mean, it's an easy solution. You could just get some tape and like make a little shroud on the bottom side of the lens or cover the LEDs. It's not that big of a deal, but just kind of a, something to be thinking about that would be an easy solution if they could uh, change the the orientation of the camera to the main board to give it keep the LEDs from reflecting into the lens that'd be wonderful but yeah um, I think that's all I got everything else is really solid I've I was worried that the motors would come undone or I'd bend the shafts or I mean I'd break the antenna whatever it's all held together it's all doing well so would I recommend the QX90 Yes, if you have the transmitter and you have the goggles, why would you not spend a little bit more money and get an amazing compact little quadcopter that you can play with inside and practice when it's rainy outside to get your FPV skills as sharp as a tack? Because that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be like a freaking razor blade in a few weeks. Uh, in all seriousness, this is like a really, really amazingly well put together package for the price. I cannot believe. Whoop, getting crazy. What you get for the price. Oh man. I shouldn't have done that. Now I can't focus on what I'm trying to say. Okay, we're back. Man. This thing is just too much fun. I can't even stop. I'm not gonna be productive today. Um, yeah, it's it's quite the kit. The only thing that it doesn't have is, like I said, goggles and the transmitter. So if you've already sunk in the money and got those for the more expensive quadcopters, and you just want a way to kind of practice or play with your your expensive equipment inside or when it's raining outside, this is the solution for you. I give it a thumbs up. I recommend it. I'm gonna be flying it every day. <laughs>